Hello everyone, this is Christian Modex Don Interactive, and in this video we are going to tackle the problem of creating responsive images on our pages. Um, there's a couple different problems, they, they call them the resolution switching and the art direction problem. In the case of uh, art direction, means that we're going to show a different image based on the resolution of the user's device. So in this case we have this image, which changes out at 1200 pixels. And the uh, important part of this is, is that this is all done with built-in browser features. There's no CSS, there's no JavaScript that's involved with switching out these pictures. You know, so we can take advantage of this by simply changing the way that we mark up images within our pages. So again, we'll take care of uh, seeing the solutions, again, both the uh, resolution switching and art direction problems in this video. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started here. So as I mentioned in the uh, introduction here, we're going to be tackling a couple of different problems related to responsive images. First one being resolution switching, the other one being the art direction. So in the case of resolution switching, basically what we're looking at is that we have an image and we have different resolutions of the same image and we want to show that those images to the users based on typically the sort of resolution or width of the device that they're using to, to view the image. So to see what we're starting off with, let's just take a look at the sort of initial state here. So what I'm gonna have here is a, a div, which I'm gonna call the, or have a class called image container. Inside that div, we have the image uh, tag, which points for a particular image. And then we also have in the image container, Another div called the image captions. I typically want a, a picture with some text uh, associated with it. So if we take a look at that, we have this image and we have the text down here. In this case, the who the artist was, where the image is from, and the URL for it. Now there are a few things that, uh, so this is a typical format that I use for images. And I do want to have this a little bit different. Uh, or uh, I, I want to style this a little bit. So if we're going to go into our style sheet here, add just a little bit of styling. So again, we have a containing div, which has the image container, container class on it. And we'll say add include media. We'll give it one EM margin top and bottom, auto left and right, because I want images to be uh, centered. And at include media what is that margin so top and bottom again we're gonna center it here what I want to do is to say well we'll use a picture tag eventually here but on picture and image I want to set the display on both of those to block uh, get rid of the silly little additional space that's underneath the image tag in case you know it since it's a inline element um, while we're at it, we're going to set for picture, include margin, uh, 0.5 EM on the bottom, nothing else. Uh, actually, I forgot something. On the image container, we're going to set that display to table. And then we'll have a the image caption. We'll have that set to display table caption caption side bottom so as that saved we have our centered our image the caption is dealing with how to handle text if it extends beyond the or tries to extend beyond the width of the image and one more thing that we'll need at the end and that's to have if our image container also has the same size class then I want the image tag within that to have a fixed width, in this case 320 pixels. Again, we'll see the use of that at the end. So we'll save that. So this is what it looks like initially without any changes. All right? And of course, if we scale this, sort of get an idea of the problem. It's not as bad on this particular one, but certainly 
this image has a different sort of impact here and makes it hard, depending on the image, it may be impossible to read the image to tell what's going on when you take a larger resolution image and squish it down on a smaller resolution device. In this case, we have an 800 width, I think it's about 800 width and 1200 height image and squished it down into a 281 width display. And so like I said, we don't, we, this is not what we want. So let's go to our first example here, which deals with have an image. So the exact same image, we're doing resolution switching problems. So the exact same image content, just different resolutions. What we're going to do is we're going to steal our image or our image container from up here, move it down. So we're going to add a couple of attributes to our image tag. First one is going to be the source set. So let me just copy this in. So what we have here is we're saying that we have different images. So these are the, the locations of the images. In each of those images, then we are also telling it what's the width of those images. So using this information along with a little bit more here, which we're going to set another attribute, which is the sizes attribute. The browser then looks at our sizes. So we say if the device has a max width of 320 pixels, then the image space is going to be 320 pixels. This could be different. You could change this number here. And then we'll say at max width 480, the image is going to take out 480 pixels. And then from then on, we'll have 800 pixels. And so that the browser will then figure out on its own which of the three images that we have, because we've told it the sizes of them, is the most appropriate for these particular size displays. So let me save that. If we click on the different sizes button there, come up here and this, I know you can't read it, but this is at 463 pixels in width. We can see that uh, we've downloaded the 480 width pixel. The breakpoint's at 480 pixels, so if we go just a little bit above that, so we're at 493, the browser has now downloaded the 800 width image. And if we go below that, there we just cross 320 and we get the 320 uh, pixel width image. So again, we're showing the exact same image just at different resolutions. All right, so that saves us the, I mean, the ability to, to see the picture. It also saves us on the, uh, you know, downloading. If we're gonna be at 320 or 380 pixels, there's no reason to download an 800 pixel uh, image. Mm -hmm. But now we have the other problem or another potential problem is that, uh, we may have the same size image, right? So we know the image is supposed to take up this amount of space on the page, but if the user has a higher resolution device, so like a retina display, we would want to show a uh, higher density image. So we can do that as well. Let me copy this in here. Actually, we'll take this, so this may be easier to know. We'll take this easier to follow. Take this, we'll add in the class for our same size that we added. So in this instance, what we want to have is, so we don't, we do not need the sizes. All right, I'm actually just gonna use two images on this one. So a lower resolution device will get 320 pixels. The higher resolution device will get 640 pixels. So basically double, and actually we, we want to get rid of that, and we don't want the width here, we want 2x, right? So if it's 2x, let's make this 640, or 320, whichever. So if it's, if it's a DPR, a device pixel ratio of one, we'll get 320. If the DPR is two, we'll serve the 640 image. So let's save that, let's go ahead and Open that up and go to the same sizes. So we can see that the image that we're showing here, we've constrained it to be 320 pixels in width and whatever the appropriate height is. Um, we've downloaded the 320 width pixel width image. 
if we set the device pixel ratio to 2, we can see that the browser has now uh, downloaded the 640 width image. Right? So this is the way that we can go about, and I don't, I don't have one for 3, but you could have you know different images for different uh, pixel ratios. Right? So that takes care of the problems that uh, they call resolution switching. So have the same image content, just at different resolutions. Next up, and is actually the one that I typically use, which is a solution to what they call the art direction problem. And that means that uh, we have an image, but we're going to show a different image based on the device, you know, the size of the device. So let's take a look at what we're, we're talking about here. Copy this in. So we have an image, save that, go to different art direction. So this is the image that we're dealing with here. The width of this image is actually 2,560 pixels. And so we get a general feel of it in a little bit. So we're at 980 pixels. If we shrink this thing down to, you know, 320 pixels, 317 pixels, this is a, this is a lot different feel to this image. It's a little bit uh, small for this. So we can deal with that. First thing off though, what we're gonna do is see what it looks like. The reason I picked this image is just the first one that came to opt it seemed like it would be uh, easier to talk about in the sense that, so we have this large image, obviously the cabin is the focal point, and we have some, you know, the forest adds to it, but it's pretty dark on the side. And like I said, this is a basically unreadable image or it's not very nice to look at. So if we chopped off, you know, forest on the side, we could get a, a probably a better image for the size. So if we go now, this is a, you know, much larger image. If I go to like, that's the, so this is sort of iPhone resolution. It's not too bad. We look at the large. So, you know, it's a much different impact between the two of them, right? And we're achieving this, again, by cropping the image. So we're showing what is essentially a different image based on the, the size of the display. And we're going to come down here and take care of doing that by adding in uh, the picture tag. All right, so the picture tag, I had this, I had to reuse this or redo this. Can I... Cannabis, no, <laughs> can I use? So, the picture tag is supported by 88.74% of browsers, and that includes all modern browsers, so Edge, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Opera. Um, they all have support for the picture tag. So if we come back in and what we'll have here, and even if they don't support the picture tag, so the picture tag contains an image tag inside of it, right? So if the browser the user is using does not support the picture tag, it's just going to automatically fall back to the image and you'll get something anyway. Uh, so the picture tag also contains, um, I guess zero if you wanted to, but one or more source uh, tags. Each of those tags can have this media attribute, so it's basically a media query. In this particular case, we're saying that if the max width of the uh, device is 1199 pixels or less, show this image, the 1200 width image. If, on the other hand, the min width of the device is 1200 pixels or more, show the 2560 width uh, image. Mm -hmm. So we'll save that. We'll go to the picture. And for some reason, it likes to hang up and not repaint, redraw, do anything when I do that. There we go. All right. So remember the uh, breakpoint was at 1,200 pixels. We're at 681. We have the 1,200 width image on here. So if we go up, that's 1,000 to 1,100. Once we cross the 1,200, we've downloaded the 2560 width pixel image, right? So we can see that's the point in which it changes, right? And this is, uh, I think, one of them. Like, 
iPad Pro or one of them has a, would be able to show the different ones. But so that's basically uh, how to deal with uh, or built in. So again, we we haven't used any CSS, we haven't used any JavaScript to switch out these uh, pictures, images. They're all uh, it's all done built in to the browser. So it makes it real easy for us to switch out images based on the resolution of the display that the user is using. Uh, so that takes care of, you know, basically creating responsive images. And in the next video, we're going to take care of lazy loading them. Right? So if I have a, a page that has either a bunch of images or it has images that are initially not on screen, so they're, you know, require the user to scroll to them, there's no reason to load them to start with, right? Maybe the user never even scrolls down to see the image. Uh, maybe they do, but you know, there's a lot of images and we can show them little by little, right? So we'll lazy load the images in the next video. So as usual, thank you for taking the time to watch the video. If you have any comments or questions, if you have some something you'd like to see, um, please leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, I will talk to you in the next video. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. I know that your time is valuable. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button as well as share the video with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And once again, thank you and I will talk to you in the next video.